Dear students, I am Simmi Singh, TGT Social Science from Kendri Vidyalaya Sangathan. Today, we are going to discuss Chapter Print Culture in the Modern World of Class 10th from History and CRT book. Students, after reading this part of the print culture, you will be able to examine and enumerate the development of printing in India and expansion in India. You will also be able to analyze the impact of printing and consider how social life and culture of India changed with the coming of print. This will enable you to understand and critically examine how print culture assisted growth of nationalism in India. To begin with, let us talk about Indian manuscripts. India had a rich tradition of handwritten manuscripts in Sanskrit, Arabic, and Persian as well as in vernacular languages. Manuscripts were copied on palm leaves or on the handmade paper and were sometimes beautifully illustrated. They were pressed between wooden covers or sewed together to ensure preservation. There were some drawbacks too. Manuscripts were highly expensive and fragile. They had to be handled carefully. They could not be read easily as the script was written in different styles. So, manuscripts were not used widely in daily life. In the image shown, you can see pages from Rigveda. This manuscript was produced in the 18th century in the Malayalam script. Another manuscript is pages from Geet Govinda of Jadeva, written on palm leaf by hand in accordion style. Print comes to India. In mid-16th century, the first printing press came to Goa with Portuguese missionaries, Catholic priests. By 1674, about 50 books had been printed in the Konkani and in Kanara language. Catholic priests printed the first Samal book in 1579 at Kochi and in 1713, the first Malayalam book was printed by them. The English press grew quite late in India. Even though the English East India Company began to import presses from the late 17th century. Weekly magazine named the Bengal Gazette was edited by James Augustus Hike. Advertisements were also published by Hike, and he also published a lot of gossip about the company's senior officials in India. By the close of the 18th century, a number of newspapers and journals appeared in prints. There were Indians too who began to publish Indian newspapers. The first one which appeared was the weekly Bengal Gazette, brought out by Gangadhar Bhattachare, who was close to Ram Mohan Roy. Talking of religious reform and public debates, religious issues became intense from the early 19th century. People started criticizing existing practices and campaigned for reform while other countered arguments of reformers. Printed tracts and newspapers spread new ideas and shaped the nature of the debate. New ideas emerged and intense controversies erupted between the social and religious reformers and the Hindu orthodoxy, even matters like widow emolition, priesthood and idolatry. In 1821, Ram Mohan Roy published the Sambat Kamudi. In 1822, two Persian newspapers published Dam Jahanama and Shamsul Akbar. The same year, a Gujarati newspaper, the Bombay Samachar, was published. Print encouraged the reading of religious texts among Hindus, especially in the vernacular languages. Religious texts reached a wide circle of people, encouraging discussions, debates, and controversies within and among different religions. Newspapers conveyed everything from one place to another, creating pan-India identities. In North India, the ulama feared that colonial rules would encourage conversion and change the Muslim personal laws. To counter this, they used cheap lithographic presses, published Persian and Urdu translations of holy scriptures, and printed religious newspapers and tracts. The Devan Seminary, founded in 1867, 
published thousands upon thousands of fatwas telling Muslim readers how to conduct themselves in their everyday lives and explaining the meaning of Islamic doctrines. Talking of new forms of publication, the printing press led to a new visual culture in India. Printers like Raja Ravi Verma produced images of mass circulation. Cheap prints and calendars become easily available and could be bought even by the poor to decorate their homes. These prints begin shaping popular ideas about modernity and tradition, religion and politics in society and culture. By the 1870s, caricatures and cartoons were being published in journals and newspapers commenting on social and political issues. Some cartoons made fun of Indians blindly copying the West and criticized British rule over India, while imperial caricatures made fun of Indian nationalists. In the image you see, the cover page of journal Indian Charivar is shown. The Indian Charivar is one of the main journals of caricature and satire published in late 19th century. Women and print. Now, what is the impact of print culture on women? When we talk of this, writers express the poor status of women. By the early 20th century, journals written by women became popular, which highlighted issues like women's education, widowhood, and widow remarriage. Some of them highlighted fashion lessons to women and entertainment through short stories and serialized novels. There were some women who defied prohibition on reading. Rashundari Devi, a young married girl in a very orthodox household, learned to read in the secrecy of her kitchen. Later, she wrote Amar Jibon, which was published in 1876 in Bengali language. Kailash Bhashini Devi wrote books highlighting the experiences of women, how women were treated unjustly. Tarabai Shinde and Pandita Ramabai, they belonged to Maharashtra. They wrote with passionate anger about miserable lives of upper caste Hindu women. If you notice the colored woodcut of Ghor Kali, the end of the world. Husband is totally dominated by his wife. And in the second woodcut, man is playing the veena while the woman is smoking a hookah. Some artists visualized and feared that the cultural impact of the West has turned the family upside down. Because by the early 20th century, journals written by women became popular, which highlighted issues like women's education, widowhood and widow remarriage. Some of them highlighted fashion lessons to women and entertainment through short stories and serialized novels. Now, we talk about print and the poor people. Kashi Baba, a Kanpur mill worker, wrote and published Chote or Bade Ka Sawal in 1938 to show the links between the caste and class exploitation. From the late 19th century, Issues of caste discrimination begin to be written about in many printed tracts and essays. Jyotiba Phule wrote about the injustice of the caste system in his Gulam Giri in 1871. In the 20th century, B. R. Ambedkar in Maharashtra and E. V. Ramaswamy Nakar in Madras, better known as Periyar, wrote powerfully on caste and their writings were read by people all over India. Print and Censorship Print and censorship was not a concern under the East India Company. The Calcutta Supreme Court passed certain regulations to control press freedom and in 1835, Thomas Macaulay formulated new rules that restored the earlier freedom. The freedom of press changed after the revolt of 1857. In 1878, the Vernacular Press Act was passed, modeled on the Irish press law. It provided the government with extensive rights to censor reports and editorials. In the Vernacular Press, government started keeping track of the Vernacular newspaper. Vernacular Press Act, what was it? 
It was modeled on the Erich Press laws, as I said. It provided government with extensive rights to censor reports and editorials in the vernacular press. From now on, the government kept regular track of vernacular newspapers published in different provinces. Nationalist newspapers grew in number all over India. In 1907, Punjab revolutionaries were deported. Bal Gangadhar Tilak wrote with great sympathy about them in his Kesri, which led to his imprisonment in 1908. It provoked widespread protest all over India. Dear learners, with this, we come to the end of the chapter, Print Culture and the Modern World. Now it is the time for some brainstorming and for that, you must try to write answers of the following questions. Question number one, what did the spread of print culture in the 19th century India means to A. Women B. The poor C. For the reformers Question number two. Examine the role of women in printing culture and revolution. Question number three. Write a short note on the prints that started shaping ideas about modernity and traditions. Question number four. How did print bring about reforms in Hindus and Muslims? Question number five. Trace the history of print revolution in India. I hope you will be able to answer all these questions after a long discussion on print culture and modern world. Thank you and have a thoughtful day ahead along with optimism and happiness. Have a good day.